ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಪಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇದಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿ ವ್ಯೋಮವತ್ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ದೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ಪಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ವಾಸುದೇವೇಂದ್ರಯೋಗೀಂದ್ರ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರದ ಗುರು ಮುಮುಕ್ಷೂಣ ಹಿತಬೋಧೋಧೀಯತೆ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಚಾಟೆಡ್ everything is a stotra everything is a shloka except this one mantra sahana bhavatu which is from the vedas yajur veda so we have to be careful that the mantras are chanted with the swaras mantras have three swaras generally and so just take care those of you who are new to it just be careful that mantra has to be chanted with those, those same swaras sahana bhavatu like that we have to say so in the north they will say it differently there are different ways of saying it in many yoga ashrams they chant it so differently so those are not correct ways of chanting shlokas we can chant any way we want <coughs> swaras are uh, you can use your own swaras you can sing it in your own raga but not the mantras okay okay so we will chant the uh, tato boda from the beginning till till where we completed so let's see maybe i'll unmute kedarnath Yeah, so you're unmuted. Kedarnath, can you hear us? Uh, yes, take a look. Okay, we can hear you also. So just repeat after me. <clears throat> Sadhana Chatushtaya Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampannadhikarinam Sampannadhikarinam ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಸಾಧನ ಭೂತ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಸಾಧನ ಭೂತ ತತ್ವ ವಿವೇಕ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ತತ್ವ ವಿವೇಕ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ವಕ್ಷ್ಯಾಮಃ ವಕ್ಷ್ಯಾಮಃ ಸಾಧನ ಚತುಷ್ಟಯ ಕಂ ಸಾಧನ ಚತುಷ್ಟಯ ಕಂ ನಿತ್ಯ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಸ್ತು ವಿವೇಕ ನಿತ್ಯ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಸ್ತು ವಿವೇಕ ಇಹಾಮುತ್ರಾರ್ಥ ಇಹಾಮುತ್ರಾರ್ಥ ಫಲಭೋಗ ವಿರಾಗ 
ಸಂಪತ್ತಿಸ್ತು ವಿವೇಕ ಅಯಮೇವ ಇಚ್ಛಾರಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಶಮಾಧಿಷಟ್ಕಸಂಪತ್ತಿಕ್ಕಿಕ್ಷಾ ಮನೋನಿಗ್ರಹ ಮನೋನಿಗ್ರಹ ದಮಃ ಚಕ್ಷುರಾದಿ ಚಕ್ಷುರಾದಿ ಬಾಹ್ಯೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ನಿಗ್ರಹ ಬಾಹ್ಯೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ನಿಗ್ರಹ ಸೊ ದಿ ಆಥರ್ ಆಫ್ ತತ್ವಬೋಧ started out with uh, mentioning briefly that sadhana chatushtaya sampanna adhikarinam i am writing this text for the people who are endowed with four fold qualifications who are ready in a way like that he started so now by asking questions the author is explaining perhaps not explaining stating so we are explaining it but the author is stating it so he says uh, so he started with sadhana chatushtayam and he asked what is the question what do you mean by sadhana chatushtayam then vivekaha viragaha and uh, samadhi shatka sampatti and mumukshutva he stated it then he now asked the question viveka kaha what is viveka we saw that nitya nitya vastu viveka ekam brahma nityam ekam brahma tad vyatiriktam sarvam anityam ayam eva nitya nitya vastu viveka we saw that then last class we saw viraga viraga kaha where the author said iha swarga bhogeshu icchara hityam 
so a mastery over desire desire being a a shakti for us one cannot and since everybody is endowed with that shakti one cannot say give up desire we saw that one has to be a master of one's desire one cannot be a victim of one's desire that is the meaning of this viraga because desire cannot be removed it is like saying you have eyes stop seeing stop seeing is not possible so stop seeing stop hearing you know the world is a dangerous place they say so stop looking at the world stop seeing like this people some people say all these things so it's all very inauspicious amangalam these statements are not if the world is a dangerous place i must take care not to not to get into dangerous situations that must be that shakti i have been given so you can stay away from certain things perfect that is perfect but don't see don't hear cannot be a proper advice don't see don't hear amangala amangalam people are chatting people are constantly criticizing others try to stay away from that kind of discussion that is a perfect advice that is perfect advice but don't use your ears don't use your eyes is not not proper eyes are given for me to see ears are given for me to hear so <clears throat> if i am tempted by certain things then i have to look into why i am getting tempted why am i constantly falling prey to these to these sweets to these kinds of entertainments like that i can ask that shakti i have been given so that is what is meant here by viraga so therefore when somebody says turn away turn away from things what they mean is not literally turning away it is like it is like when we were children when we were small kids we used to be attracted to balloons we run after balloons we fight for balloons i want the red balloon no no he has two balloons i also want two balloons like this we fought now tell me today i presume we are not running after those kinds of balloons so are you struggling hard to keep away from balloons whenever you see a balloon you close your eyes oh no i can't see the balloons no we don't do that you grow out of the need or desire for balloons you don't have to stop hearing children playing with balloons you actually go along with the children you play with the children you throw the balloon at them and you just enjoy but you don't come out and say after all this you know what how i missed balloons all these years how come from tomorrow onwards i think i need to get some more balloons and i want to play with balloons so no i don't see any adult saying these kinds of things so viraga look at this viraga so this person we are all vairagis when it comes to balloons there are vairagis this is the viraga that is being talked about here okay this is last class so now we have to <coughs> uh, move on to the next next line here which happens to be a question so uh, so let's see here so rangan ji chitra ji is there in uh, austin so i can unmute you yeah can you hear us chitra ji ha ah, namaskaram parla vidal de namaskar namaskar yeah. very good so just repeat after me <clears throat> okay shama adi shama adi shama adi shama adi yeah shatka sampatti hi shatka sampatti hi ka ka 
Shamaha. Shamaha. Damaha. Damaha. Uparamaha. Uparamaha. Titiksha. Titiksha. Shraddha. Shraddha. Samadhanam. Samadhano. Samadhanam. Samadhanam. Keti. Keti. Yeah. <clears throat> so when we do this, I'm doing it so that all of you can also repeat along with us. And uh, I'm unmuting just one person because if I unmute everybody, what happens is there is uh, the, the system is not able to it just presents a mixed up voice and it it becomes incoherent so that's why i'm doing this okay so here the author she's asking a question shamadi shatka sampatte ka by now you understand kaha ka these things means what so what is shamadi shatka sampatti she is asking the question directly and she answers so she is asking what is this sampatti this wealth this treasure which is called shamadi and which is six fold means there are six kinds of there are six things which happens to be popular it seems and which starts with shama we saw that before shamadi Shamadi means Shama, etc. Shama, etc. So that's a typical, uh, in Sanskrit you will find this, Adi, the word Adi being used. And uh, which, ref which literally means etc. Now, Adi actually is not etc. Adi means first, see Adi Bhagavan, first God. You know, Adi, Adi Deva, Adi Murti, like this we say, means the first. Adi is actually first. But the meaning of Shamadi is in Sanskrit a group that in which a group of items in which Shama is the first item. That is the literal translation of Shamadi. Okay. So a group where Shama is first means what in English? How do you translate? We just say Shama, etc. That's all. That's what it means. Okay, so Adi does not mean etc. Adi means first, but we, when we translate it, it comes out like that. Okay, all right. So he has now enumerated all the six, all the six in this group Shatka. What are those? He says Shamaha, then he says Damaha, Uparatihi, Titiksha, Shraddha, Samadhana. So is there six? Right now we counted six. Just a little bit of Sanskrit. You know, Shamaha is the Sanskrit word, but here it says Shamo. If you noticed in the text, it will say Shamo. Correct? Yeah, Shamo it says. So that is just a Sandhi. We have not, in, in Sanskrit classes, we study Sandhi. And uh, so this Visarga, these two dots when you see in Sanskritam, it is called Visargaha. Visargaha. And that Visarga undergoes some transformation depending on what is the next letter, the following letter. So in this case, the following letter is the, which is a soft consonant. And if a soft consonant follows a Visarga, there is a rule that says the Visarga will become O. That's the rule. So that's why this Shamaha became Shamo. But when we break and chant, so when we chant together, it becomes Shamo, Dhamma, Uparamas, Titiksha, like that it goes. But when we break it, then we have to say Shamaha, because the actual word is Shamaha. We can't say Shamo. Generally, we won't chant Shamo. Shamo, if you are going to continue, Shamo, Dhamma, like that. Otherwise, Shamaha. Likewise, Dhamaha. When the Visarga is followed by a vowel, 
is who is a vowel uparamaha who is a vowel so then there is a rule that says the visarga drops visarga drops so the damaha this visarga drops therefore dama remains okay so that is why you have these things so when we generally chant like this don't get confused so we split shamaha damaha like that you will hear okay that is just some language shamaha shamaha means an internal an inner composure an inner composure somebody is sthiram is has some is not carried away by things has some poise that is what is shamaha we are going to see that more later then damaha <clears throat> damaha is a mastery of our sense organs and our organs of action so we we can use our sense organs and we also restrain our sense organs we have the capacity to do that we will say that's enough when we say that's enough that is called dama okay dama good then uparamaha uparama is observance of one's duties all of us have duties in life and depending on the role we are playing and that role is called playing that role properly is called uparamaha okay then titiksha titiksha is endurance sometimes they will use the word forbearance ability to put up with inconveniences understanding that these inconveniences are temporary that is the meaning of titiksha shraddha many books will translate shraddha as faith uh shraddha as belief i don't know how to translate shraddha shraddha is shraddha that is the only translation i have for shraddha shraddha in america if you are, i tell kids these things so what is shraddha uncle they will say say shraddha is shraddha that's the only translation i have i have no other translation if i translate it then people will start getting ideas so we you can say trust trust is a better word belief pending verification we saw that before that also is a, is is a better uh, way of saying it that is shraddha samadhanam samadhanam means focus single pointedness when we are interested in something when we want to gain something when we want to learn something we have samadhanam we have the ability to focus on any particular topic that is called samadhan okay so this is samadhi shatka sampatti now as expected the author will now ask a question and answer we will see that so mohini ji i am going to unmute you <coughs> just repeat after me <coughs> क्वेश्चन just one word answer he gives she gives mano nigraha <clears throat> mana mano we already recognize that word mana is there here now so mind is involved some way mano nigraha nigraha means again some kind of discipline mastery so you can say mastery of the mind you can say resolution of the mind 
You see, it's so hard to translate these words. See, understand this. The minute we start translating it, see, the author has something to convey, okay? Look at this, it's so abstract. The author has something to convey. And she's trying to convey by using one or two words or three words or ten words. Now we have to translate it into English. And through English, we are trying to understand Sanskrit. And then we are trying to understand the mind of the author. Okay. So we have to be so careful here. And that's why so much explanation is given. Especially when this is so abstract. It's not like saying this is apple. This is banana. This is orange. Means you show orange two, three times. You show the child understands orange. Then never in the future child will make a mistake. Will never get confused between apple and orange. Very clear. The two-year-old child knows it. One-year-old child knows it very well. It knows to point out, I want this apple. It will say, no doubt in the mind of the child. But here, we have to be a little careful. <clears throat> okay. So, let's say, discipline, mastery of the mind. And some books will translate this as, control of the mind. Control of the mind. Destruction of the mind. You may have seen these words before. Uh, emptying of the mind. So we will see why some of these translations are wrong. <clears throat> we, can, we looked at the differences between animals and human beings when we studied Purushartha. <clears throat> We see so many animals with so much ability. There are bats. There are bats which can... They are blind. Bats are blind. They use this sonar to identify targets and to fly. They are constantly using sonar. I suppose sonar was invented by studying bats. So they are able to fly, they are able to recognize what is the target, they are able to hone in on plants, on leaves, on fruits and they can even through that sonar they can identify a ripe fruit from an unripe fruit, kacha versus pakka, they can identify. That ability they have, this small little, little bird can do that. Then Dogs are there and you, you, you travel either domestic or international in the, in the, and you end up at an airport. Suddenly you find a dog near you. Are, I didn't get a dog. What happened? Where is this dog coming from? There is a policeman standing next to the dog. So he's coming and sniffing all these bags, luggage. And he's going around and sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. So this dog has that ability to just be trained and sniff for particular items. Amazing. Human being can't do that. There are sharks. I've, told, I've been told sharks had this, have this amazing ability to sense blood. So last week I googled a little bit to, to, to find out what is the facts. I used to think sharks can smell uh, or sense blood, even a drop of blood at my This is what I used to think. So I googled a little bit. So there is some truth to that. It seems parts per billion, one drop of blood in a swimming pool, an Olympic sized swimming pool, okay, not my the swimming pool that is there in some people's houses, a small little swimming pool, not that. Olympic sized swimming pool. You put one drop of blood, it seems the shark can, some sharks, not all sharks, some sharks can sense that. Just a molecule, a part, part per billion. So amazing it is, absolutely amazing. So, so much is there. Now, then what is the use of this human being? Good for nothing or what? No, human being doesn't have all this and they need not have all this. Human being, we saw the uniqueness of the human being is a buddhi. 
that has the ability to think and talk about dharma to be compassionate to think about big things in life all this only the human being can do so therefore and 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 this self awareness is unique to the human being okay self awareness means i am aware of myself i am aware of who i am i am aware of my capabilities i am aware of just like i am aware of the whole world i can analyze the whole world i can appreciate the whole world i can create music i can create books i can write i can talk the human being can do so many things and i am self aware also which is very different from the animal and the the, the shastram uses the word antakaranam for the buddhi shastram uses the word antakaranam what is antakaranam karanam means instrument okay karanam means instrument knife must be used a fork must be used a machine a grinder must be used a needle must be used meant for using so when the shastram says antakaranam an inner instrument it is meant for using only so the point of this discussion is destroy the mind cannot be cannot be a goal of this cannot be a how must it be used i am unable to use my mind properly my mind is constantly agitated like that we can say okay so now we have to look into what shama is so such a small word just two letters it has first first aspect of shama is understanding anxiety i have i have fear i am frustrated on and off sometimes i feel vulnerable sometimes i feel helpless so i have fear basically i am a fearing person and so the mind presents fear mind projects fear fear i am anxious on and off i become anxious so i am given to anxiety and so the mind presents projects anxiety on these situations because otherwise what will happen i will say i am a i am always an anxious person so i can say that i may say that so understanding these emotions that these emotions are not bad per se is the first step in shama they are they are there and second step will be to accept those emotions accept those emotions i appreciate that there is a need for these emotions if they are all given for a particular thing you know love is an emotion compassion is an emotion courage is an emotion fear is an emotion anxiety is an emotion all these are emotions i don't have to be afraid of my emotions this is the second aspect of shama which is accepting emotions as they are i may not know the reason why i am becoming anxious i may not know the reason why 
I seem to be afraid of them, but I accept them. Very important. Accepting emotions is very important. Okay, second step. Second aspect of Shama. Third aspect of Shama. Not labeling the emotion, not labeling the mind. You know, I am, anything I say, I am always anxious. I am an anxious person. I am a fearful person. I am dumb. I am a coward. I am this. I am that. The minute I label myself like that, Many of you know, labeling is such a dangerous thing. Because when I label myself, then what I'm telling is, I have defined my nature to be always filled with anxiety. Therefore, if I do that, it precludes, it precludes the possibility of my being without anxiety. It precludes the possibility of my being without fear. So I am not giving myself the opportunity to say, you know, I can also be free of ice, these unpleasant emotions. So labeling, very important. Very important. See, when I first went to America, I heard that some people, when I used to have conversations, they used to say, they used to say, I am not a math person. They used to say that, I am not a math person. I'm not a math person. And uh, somebody said, I am not a name, I am not a name person. So, labeling we were talking about. So, they used to say that. I never heard this kind of statement. I am not a name person. <clears throat> Somebody could not recall my name or something like that. So, immediately she said, I am not a name person. I don't remember names. So, I am not a math person. Means what? She is trying to tell me, I am not good in math. Okay. We don't claim that we are all good in math. So, many of us are not good in mathematics. But when they say, I'm not a math person, mm -hmm. I'm not a people person, you know, ah, this, I'm not a people person. <laughs> I'm not a people person means what? I, I don't, I don't, I, the implication is, she's trying to tell us, I don't know how to relate to people that well. Okay, maybe that's what she's trying to say. So when we label ourselves, we get into problems because sometimes we use it as an excuse. I'm not a people person. That means what? So I can behave as, as, as I like with all of you. This is what I mean. This is, this is, I'm giving myself a license. So I can shout at you because I'm not a people person. You know, not, not acceptable. Not acceptable. I'm not a math person. So what? You go to the store and they say it costs 45 rupees. I give him 100 rupees. I must know. I must get back at least 40, 55 rupees. This much I know, everybody in India knows all this. Little bit of negotiation also they know. All kids also know all this. And I can't say I'm not a math person, so I came back home with only 30 rupees. No, no husband or wife will accept this kind of stuff. The wife will slap this fellow. I said, what kind of guy is it? How are you going to take care of this family? This is not acceptable. So, this I'm not a math person is not acceptable. So labeling, third aspect we are trying to say, very important, labeling is important, important because we do label ourselves and when we label ourselves, we are disadvantaging ourselves. We are putting ourselves in a bracket. We are putting ourselves in a pit from which we cannot get up. So never label. <clears throat> okay, I have fear, I have anxiety, there is a reason for it and there are ways there are means to, to help myself. 
come out of this trap. If I think it is a trap, I can come out of the trap. Okay, that is that is the third aspect, which is not labeling. And see, when I say emotions are there, there is a reason. And a little bit of psychology is good to understand. See, when I grow as a child, I may have suppressed a lot of emotions. Family situations may have been in such a way that there might have been trauma at home. And the body has a wonderful capacity. The child cannot handle trauma. Especially emotional trauma, it cannot handle. Even physical trauma, some, some, some injury has happened, some bone has broken or something. The person is not able to handle it. So what the body does, it makes the person unconscious. Amazing. Look at this defense mechanism. It's absolutely amazing. It makes the person unconscious. Why should the person become unconscious? Now, there may be a medical reason for that. I'm not talking about the medical reason. But the person is prevented from observing the blood flowing right now. The person is prevented from being aware of this accident. And the person is just lying like this. And so temporarily, the body is prevent, mind is prevented from being aware of these things. Wonderful defense mechanism. So like that, when there are there is emotional abuse at home, Swamiji talks a lot about these things. When the parents are abusing the children, parents are abusing each other, physical violence, whatever happens, it's, it's very traumatic to the child. A child cannot handle it. The child looks at it and just becomes vulnerable because for the child the parents are the source of stability and if the parents themselves are behaving like this the child doesn't know what to do so unstable trauma creates that vulnerability and the next day the child goes to school and the child appears so normal and the child is smiling and playing and saying hello and this and that how the child can behave like this when so much trauma is there at home, that is because the mind has the ability to suppress that trauma, push the trauma into the background, into the unconscious and keep it there. Keep it there so that the child can deal its, with its life, normal life. But then this unconscious has to be, has to come out and so it comes out sometimes. And therefore, sometimes we feel, hey, there is no cause for fear. Why am I afraid now? If you have that feeling, it is because that unconscious is releasing that suppressed fear from the past. I shouted at somebody just now. I, I snapped at somebody. But then I look back and say, there is no reason. Why did I shout? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done it. Why did I do it when I shouldn't have done it? That anger has been suppressed from the past. Somewhere I was a victim and the anger had been put in the background and that background emotion is coming out. A simple reasoning psychologists will give for some of these emotions, very important to understand. So when I understand this, then I am able to better accept my emotions. So third aspect of Shama is what? Accepting emotions by understanding that there is a science, there is a reason behind all these things. And sometimes the emotions are so strong, so painful. And you sit and cry because you feel so helpless. All of us have gone through this. And so... Allow it to happen. Sakashayam vijani yat. Even our Shastram says that. Shankaracharya says that somewhere. Sakashayam vijani yat. Understand that 
kashaya kashaya you know in 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 in, in tamil kashayam means something that the essence of essence of some whether it is tea tea kashayam inji kashayam so we make all these things at home so juice essence herbal juices that is called kashayam so here he says from the past there is still some of that kashayam left still some of that when you drop the tea on your on your shirt you can imagine that tea stain will never go even all this modern bleaching powders and bleaching liquids find it difficult to remove the tea that's how strong it is it just hangs on so the past hangs on and so shankaracharya says sakashayam vijani yat understand that those past is there with me with you and therefore don't brand yourself don't label yourself okay that is the third aspect okay don't label and second was accept emotions okay that is shama then there is a fourth aspect of shama which is work on issues okay so i snap at people left and right i abuse my wife i abuse my husband i abuse my children i shout at my parents not acceptable at least now i know that that is not good i am only hurting my family i am hurting my relationships i am hurting myself in the process so then what i need to work on myself work on this consult somebody talk to somebody who knows these things in indian culture there were no psychologists there were only swamis there were our gurus our guru was our psychologist that's it and we will just pour our heart out to our teachers our gurus and we will say this fellow is always like this the wife will complain always guru ji he always shouts at me and she he will say no she is always keeping the home dirty she doesn't clean up the house then the guruji has to intervene are beta okay what house is dirty means what is house really dirty unhygienic no no it's not unhygienic ah then what no some stuff is hanging on the tv there is some stuff on this and that okay there is some stuff on the tv what is wrong with that is there a rule that there should not be any stuff on top of the tv ah no there is no rule like that ah then what ah uh, yeah guruji you are right so some guruji has to come and solve all this solve all these things this is how we used to become we used to be sane by talking about our problems and not even guruji even neighbor is enough and we go out and complain to our neighbor he is like this she is like that she never listens to me today he did this yesterday she did that on and on it goes so sometimes pouring our heart out is good don't victim- while pouring your heart don't victimize the other person please this is what we have to remember the other person is not interested in listening to our ramayana and okay one minute okay two minutes okay but on and on goes on and this fellow has to go to the bank they he has to do so many things he has to pick up the son from the school there so many things pending wife is screaming vegetables lao so he has to go to the market you don't hijack this fellow so okay you talk to other people but don't hijack them so try to sometimes we have to go beyond this we may have some real emotional issues so consult a psychologist nothing wrong that is the right thing to do in america i remember they, when i was working they used to have this uh, this uh, every they have this medical insurance and part of that insurance is uh, it's called they call it nicely there is some work uh, it's 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 counseling basically it is counseling they have a nice phrase for that and 10 hours of counseling you can get you can go to a psychologist and free 10 hours of counseling so i wanted to try it out so i did i went to a, i found a nice psychologist 
one of our uh, one of our uh, uh, homestay Gita class uh, students my colleague uh, my friend was uh, was herself a psychologist and so I told Anjali hey tell me do you know any good psychologist here near my area she, she pointed gave me an idea and I took appointments and went to him so I spoke about my problems to him and he used to ask questions and he was carefully listening and all that so very useful it was it pointed it pointed to some of the things I needed to work on and it pointed to things where I was blaming myself a lot look at that we all blame ourselves too guilt blame keep on blaming ourselves why did I do this why did I not do this guilt just kills us doesn't allow us to sleep so we need to work on all these issues taking help from somebody intelligent living is seeking help when we need help there was a time when I did not know that we could seek help I could seek help then I slowly attending Swamiji's classes and I realized oh we can ask for help oh when I am in trouble I can say I am troubled and I, I can ask for help so asking for help is the right thing to do and do it and talk to the people who who in your opinion you can trust and who have the capacity to help best anybody who has that kind of a guide is really blessed and so like even I used to talk to Swamiji call Swamiji up sometimes and say this is a problem I have what do I do so such a relief it is even if they are able to speak to us for one minute it makes a big difference so fourth item fourth aspect of Shama is work on issues okay because nothing can be bypassed there is no shortcut you can't suppress you can't suppress bypass karna nahi you can't bypass everything has to be accepted one has to strike a strike a ceasefire with all these forces that are there you know they have ceasefires like that we have to have our own ceasefire in this mind are namaste yeah 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 okay okay i got it i got it i got it please give me some peace so ceasefire peace ceasefire and it works ceasefire works very well and all 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 the techniques that our our rishis have given all seem to work and help us so that the next step is fifth item is the mind is available to me when I want it. This is the fifth and the last aspect of Shama. So I have come here to study Tattva Goda. So the mind must be available. After all, one hour a week. I, can I concentrate for one hour a week? Or is my mind wandering? I'm thinking about work. Work is always going to be there. Family is always going to be there. Children are always demanding our attention. Finance issues are always going to be there. How am I going to be present in this class with so many things pending? If I can be present, that means I have Shama. I can tell myself, okay, close the doors. Everything will wait for one hour. Everything can wait for one and a half hours. The whole, the sky will not fall down. Beta, I will come. Don't worry. I give that person the confidence. Hey, nothing will happen. I'm not ignoring you. I'm not ignoring you. Just one hour. That's all. And the child also understands. Yeah, yeah. Father is there. Mother is there. They're not running away. So that assurance I give them. And I come to the class. And I'm there. So being there is so important. So these days I find a lot of people. This WhatsApp, this phone is right here. This phone is like our tail. It comes along with us. 
and they are all constantly on the phone. Very few people are actually looking at each other like this. Even sitting on the dinner table, four people are sitting, they are all looking down like this. Only the heads, the top of the heads are facing each other. Are kya ho gaya? Dinner table is the only place where people can look at each other. These days everybody has a room, everybody has their laptop, everybody has their TV and they are all looking at something or the other. So we need to be very careful <clears throat> that this mind is the only blessing we have and we don't fritter it away. We have to protect this mind. That is called Shama. So look at this. Shama kaha mano nigraha. How can we say destruction of mind? How can we say emptying the mind? All these things are now you can see those things are not correct. Nobody can say empty the mind. Let the mind be available to me. Let me be a master of my mind. Let my mind bless me. Let me understand what is being told. Let me be clear about what I want to know in life. So I am not distracted by so many things that are out there. Let me be more or less happy with myself. Let me be happy with what I have. Whatever little I have, whatever much I have, let me be happy. That's Shama. Look at that. How beautiful Shama is. So one word Shama, Mano Nigrahaha. A resolution of mind. A mastery of the mind. They say it is a qualification. And now we can understand why it is a qualification because that is what is needed to hold on to the subject matter this moksha is there. The Shastram is talking about Brahma, Ikva, Jeeveshwara, Aikyam. Hey, there is Ishwara, there is Jiva. And there is something to be understood about Jiva and Ishwara. So my mind must be available for it. Without judging it. That is called Shama. Okay. So we are going to pause now. And uh, we will uh, chant this. Prarthana Shlokas Om Swasti Prajabhya Paripala Yantam Nyayena Margena Mahimahisha Go Brahmane Pesh Brahmastu Nityam Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Kale Varshatu Parjanya Prithavi Sasya Shalini Desho Yam Kshobha Rahitaha Brahmana Santu Nirbhayaha <coughs> Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadra Nipashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukha Bhag Bhavet Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityor ma amritangamaya, om pur namadaf pur namidam pur nat pur namudachyate, pur nasya pur namadaya pur nameva vashishyate, Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om So if there are any questions, uh, let, let us know. Jay yeah, Kumar, I have a question. Yeah. Him and Prasad and Vishnu. One second, Hara. Okay. We will get Vishnu online. <coughs> uh, Shri Guru Bhionamha. Jai Kumar Ji, one uh, doubt I got. Uh, what is the relation between Shama and um, uh, the state of Sthita Pragna? Uh, because uh, me, me, meaning sounded many uh, many things similar, but why are they two different, different words and what are, what are the differences? What is the relation between those two? 
Yeah. So, <clears throat> Shama is a preparation. Preparation to, to, to approach the Shastram. I need to have Shama so I can appreciate the Shastram better. Mm -hmm. Sita Pragna is the end result of studying the Shastram. End result of studying the Shastram. Mm -hmm. When I appreciate that I am the whole, when I appreciate that there is no reason for fear, there is no reason for this being alienated. I feel so alienated now, but when I recognize there is no reason for alienation, then what I have is called Sthita Pragnyatva. Okay? That is Sthita Pragnyatva, where there is really no there is no anxiety. It is not, see, Shama is an emotional mastery, remember. Whereas Sthita Pragnyatva is a mastery gained of knowledge. Yeah. So it's the end, end of end result. Uh, That's the end result. Yeah. Correct. Oh. End is it. Shama is a preparation. Oh. Shama is taking care of the basics. Mm. Shama is being reasonably smart about ourselves. Shama is saying, hey, I don't want to beat my mind all the time. Mm. I don't keep whipping my mind. You're no good. You're no good. That's not, I can't do that. I can't afford to do that. That is Shama. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Haraprasad, uh, I have... Uh, uh, unmuted yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the third in Shetka Sampati is Uparama and Uparati are the, are the same. Yes. Hara. Uparama and Uparati are the same. Correct. Okay. Thank Correct. you. Yeah. Okay. I think Thank him you. had a. Okay. I have unmuted you, him. My question is, uh, what is the difference between Manaha and Siktaha? So, a bit low in audio. Uh, um, say again. Uh, Can you hear me now? Yeah, much better. Yeah. yeah. So, what is the difference between Manaha and Chittaha? Ah, what is the difference between Manaha and Chitta? Okay. So, <clears throat> So you can unmute, uh, you can mute yourself. <clears throat> so they, they are sometimes synonyms depending on the context. And sometimes they are not synonyms. Chitta means something entirely different. Something entirely different. Chitta refers to consciousness. So, the subtle aspect. So, there, for example, Mano Buddhi, Mano Buddhi Hankara Chittani Naham, Nirvana Chatkam, Shankara says. So, there he clearly differentiates various faculties of the mind. He says Mana, then he says Buddhi, he says then Hankara, then he says Chitta. So then we have to not read these words differently. So their mana means seat of emotions. Seat of emotions alone. What about thinking? No, mana doesn't mean thinking there because he's now introducing the word buddhi. Buddhi from dhyayi dhatu, which means to chintane, think. So the thinking faculty is buddhi. And then what? Ahankara. Ahankara specifically he calls out. Because the sense of I. If I ask anybody, if we are asked, who are you? Anything I say reflects Ahankara. I have an idea of who I am. I am a male. I am, a, I am the husband. I am the wife. I am the head of this family, I am an employee, I work here, I did this, I did that, I don't have this, I don't have that. Every this I is Ahankara. Sense of this individuality. And Ahankara can be extended to this egoism, egotism, etc. All that also is Ahankara.
But even the basic sense of I also is ahankara. Okay. Then chittani naha. So there, there chittani is very interesting. It can even refer to remembrance and things like that. Memory. Because I use, I have memory. And I associate with my memory. So in other words, I say, I can say my date of birth is so much. I studied here 30 years ago, 40 years ago. So I use memory and using that I identify with my memory to some aspect of me. That can be chitta. And even more subtle aspects of I am a conscious being. I am consciousness. So Shankara refers to any aspect of myself that is so subtle that I associate with is also chitta. And chitta means Satchidananda is there. So there also chit word comes. So satyam, so knowledge, satyam. Chit, there is awareness, awareness. So I am aware of things. This awareness often we take it for granted. That awareness is chit. So in the in the Vedanta, the chit refers to awareness. So summarizing this discussion, chit can also be mean mana if depending on context, but in its many contexts, it means awareness, consciousness. When I say I'm consciousness, conscious of things, I am conscious of the laptop. The laptop is not conscious of me. That consciousness is chit. <clears throat> okay. Consciousness is chit. Any, uh, hey, many, any doubts there? Uh, yeah. So now, so if chit is consciousness, then what is the difference between chit and Brahman? Yeah. So that's what we need to study. That's what we're going to study. And so, so Brahman is Chit. Chit is Brahman. See, the way, the example we give is this. So, we have to be careful here. Chit is Brahman in a certain context. Chit is Brahman. But if you recognize Brahma as having the attribute of consciousness. That attribute is not Brahma because Brahma has no attributes. Brahma cannot have an attribute. But if you look at Chit as consciousness, the attribute of being conscious of anything, that cannot be Brahma because then you are given an attribute. However subtle the attribute is, it can't be Brahma. So we will say, so that, that distinction we have to make. That, so there is a wave in the ocean. There is a wave in the ocean. The wave is all water. The wave is water because no part of the wave you can't point to any part of the wave and say this is not water. Every part of the wave is water. But water is not wave. Because water can't be wave. Because if water is wave, then there should be waves in my kitchen. There should be wave. If I shed a couple of tears, then waves must be there. Because where there is water, there is wave. That is not true. Therefore, we say wave is water. Water is not wave. Very important aspect which we will we will study. This is a very critical aspect, central aspect of Vedanta. B is A, A is not B. This we will study more. Okay.
Okay. If there are no other questions, then uh... yeah, go ahead. Uh, unmute yourself, him. Uh, yeah, uh, I have an unrelated question. Uh, so in in the temples there is this stamba. So what is the significance of the stamba in the? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I have to find out the real significance of it. I mean, I can give various answers to that. But uh, see, there is a see. They they used to have in Shiva temples. They used to have Nandi hmm. right in the front of the temple. Yeah, Nandi is watching Shiva. Shiva is looking at Nandi. And when we do our pradakshina. When we do our Pradakshina, we go, we cover Nandi also. We don't leave Nandi out. And so, we used to do that. We still do that. And then there is, of course, at the same spot, there is also Vajas Thamba is there. See, a Thamba, a Thamba is a symbol of something big. The temple has a Shikara. The sh temple has a Shikara. Right, it has a, a an apex, yeah, which is visible, hmm. is visible, and the and the stamba also stands for a shikara like thing, and it stands for it stands for a respect to be shown to to the devata to the devata. See, if you look at a flag, what is a flag? A flag. A flag is almost no different from a country. That is why you cannot desecrate a flag. Mm -hmm. You can't, no, no citizen can, can abuse a flag, can put down a flag, can burn a flag. That is why in America, some people, if they want to show, if they want to show distaste to the government, what they will do is they will burn the flag. They'll burn the flag. And he will get arrested and things like that. So, like this, the shikara is also a symbol that demands our attention. Attention to something very big. And so, if the shikara itself is so big, then you focus on the devata there. That is there inside. So, this is my understanding. I will, I will find out some more about the significance of shikara. There is more, I am sure. And maybe some, some of you here might also know. Yeah, Mohini, go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, this was, there was a discussion once in our Veda class uh, about this uh, flag being on top of the Gopuram or, or uh, like high up on a temple. So one of the explanations that was given was like on top of the uh, shikara of the temple, if a vulture or a uh, bird sits, it's not supposed to be good omen. So they put a flag so that if it's fluttering, the birds don't come and sit there. I, I don't know if that's correct or not, but this was one of the points that was mentioned during discussions. I, mean, I don't know if it is mentioned in the Shastras. Yeah, I'll find out more. I'll find out more okay. about this. That Can I add something? Can I add something? Yeah, please go ahead. Sir, during Kumbhapishagam, they put uh, five cigars on the top. They are filled with uh, uh, this uh, nil, that is uh, rice with uh, husk. And some more, some more uh, material is added. And these, after this, they reflect the radiation from the cigars to the top of the samba and the and the sigala will be directly uh, head will be directly pointing to the mula mula vigraha. In some of the temples, olden temples, the mula vigraha is directly uh, the, uh, looking at the, at the samba's head, and it it reflects the angle to the top of the uh, gopuram. So the power is uh, of the mula vigraha is reflected like that. 
sometimes the material inside the sigara that uh, temples so the temple go gobra head they say the material is after an olden day or old temples they become iridium it which is a very active material that's why some temples when uh, aircraft is uh, flying some germans have they have found there is a iridium somewhere, somewhere here there is a very active material somewhere here they were revolving around that finally this is the reason Also, so there are two okay. things. So, One is so uh, the the significance. Is uh, significance is the power is radiated so from power is radiated to the top, so that the entire village is gets uh, benefited. Of the this is this what you just said is the significance of the shikara, correct? Okay. It is the significance so of the, the God. God's the power is radiated to the. Radiated uh, throughout the village through this uh, dojastamba, the power the power of the god is radiated through the dojastamba top and to the sikara and from the sikara to the entire village. Okay, so sikara. So when you refer to sikara, you mean the sikara that is right on top of the mola var? No, no, no. Five, uh, you you see five so, kumbas. Five kumbas on the top of the gobram. You might have seen. Yes. Five kumbas. Uh, so during kumbha vishayam, they Correct. do uh, they fill it up with uh, wise uh, husk and uh, some more material, and along with that. Uh, uh, you don't have to. You don't have to repeat. You don't have to repeat all that. Like yeah, yeah. Okay. The shikara, the mool, main main vigraha is there. Under the main temple, the shikara is there on top of the mula mula vigraha. Yes, Mula-vig. yes. Okay. Mm. And then samba is right in front of the main deity. The deity. samba is in front of the main deity. Okay. So, are you suggesting that the power of Ishvara of the mula var goes to the samba and then is reflected on the shikara, which is on top of the mula var? Is that the way we should visualize it? Yes, yes. On the ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, there are uh, sastras, and then uh, some are very, very subtle. That is, uh, both uh, both are totally different. The puja and all that are different. The why why we are following the rituals? Why why we should not follow the only directly directly we can approach God and those things are we can ask doing puja. Why we should do this way? But there are some meanings. Okay, but these are it comes under that category. Why there should be a samba? Why things? These are all given somewhere, and it is followed uh, uh, generations, and we are also following. The Agama Shastra comes under most likely Agama Shastra. Agama Shastra, yes. Okay, thanks, uh, invitation ji. I will try to find out some more. <laughs> Please okay. find out about that iridium. Some Germans they have found out. Iridium on top of some uh, southern temple. I think uh, Susindram, Susindram. It has become so very active that they were revolving around that. India is making some iridium or something. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Venkatesh. <clears throat> okay. So if there are no other questions. <clears throat> So I'll give you a quick update. Uh, some some of you asked for an update mm. on the meeting uh, in Delhi. So we uh, one second. Let me pause. So, so. <laughs>